All right, so I'm going to start my lesson for the day. Um, and this is for English 100. And we're going to be starting our new unit on the open letter. Uh, it's a part of the evaluative sequence. Uh, but, but the first thing I'd like to do is do some housekeeping for the previous unit. Some of you haven't uh, submitted your, your how-to guides. Uh, and if you haven't done that, do it as soon as you can because the revision is due on Friday uh, on the 10th. It might be Sunday, but it's due on the 10th. Um, so if you haven't done it, get it in. I won't grade it at a penalty. Just submit it when you get a chance. Uh, but now we're going to start our unit on the open letter. Um, this is a part of the evaluative sequence. So I'd like to just go over the assignment sheet real quick. I'm going to share my screen. So you should be able to see the same screen that I do. Uh, and this is the open letter. So the open letter or a letter to the editor, if we think about historical examples, we think about Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham jail in 1963. So what I want you guys to do now is pause the video and go on to D2L and you'll find under videos, under the course content, a four minute video uh, that, that highlights uh, Martin Luther King's 1963 letter from Birmingham jail. And essentially what he does is that he submits a letter uh, to the clergy of Birmingham, Alabama that calls out their hypocrisy during the civil rights movement. Uh, and the letter eventually became published widely in newspapers and it functioned as, as, as this open letter and it was a catalyst during the civil rights movement. So it's a, it's a very important notable open letter. So go ahead and pause this video and go ahead and uh, go on to D2L and watch the, it's about a four minute, Four, four or five minute video. So you should be pausing. All right, so other examples for an open letter would be to simply go on to Google and do a Google search for open letters or even letters to the editor. And you will find a wealth of open letters and letters to the editor as exemplar examples. Um, especially now in the political climate and the geopolitical climate with the coronavirus, uh, there is a lot of information and a lot of people uh, chiming in uh, through the press. So you can find open letters online and letters to the editor, no problem. Or if you have a local newspaper, there's always open letters and letters to the editor where people are just sounding off about issues in their community. Uh, even if you would read, uh, the Cal Times, sometimes you'll find letters to the editor uh, where students complain about certain aspects of uh, campus life and academic life. So it's worth uh, checking out because you might want to model these in your own open letter. So I would ask is why would we write an open letter? And normally in class I would ask you guys and then we come up with some ideas and put them on the board. Uh, but I'll just give it to you right now. So why would, we, why would we write an open letter? You are feeling angry about something. You feel compelled to speak out. Maybe there's some great injustice that's going on. Uh, maybe something hap is happening in, on campus or in your community that's making you very angry. Uh, you wanna suggest an idea to a large group. Uh, you wanna influence public opinion. Uh, is the last resort to ask the public to judge, uh, to open a public dialogue or a conversation. So, I think one of the biggest examples in our current historical moment is this uh, idea of social distancing. Uh, so maybe perhaps people might write an open letter or a letter to a, a newspaper saying, people, you need to stay inside, here's why. And then you highlight the ideas that the only way we're gonna flatten the curve is if we practice social distancing. So if you were to do that, you would be angry about it because it's like, hey people, you're, you're spreading coronavirus you feel compelled to speak out, so you write the letter. Uh, you wanna suggest an idea to a large group, so you send the letter, and hopefully the intention is that to whatever medium you send it to, it gets distributed uh, widely. Uh, and you wanna obviously influence public opinion. There might be people still going to the beach in Florida. Well, they read this letter, they're like, maybe I shouldn't, that's a bad idea. And as a last resort to, uh, as a, excuse me, as a last resort to ask the public to judge, so people read this, they're like, you know, it is a good idea that we should social distance, now I'm gonna judge other people. And to open a public dialogue or conversation. So it's really important to do that when you're doing the open letter or a letter to the editor. Um, when would you write an open letter? Well, they can be written at any time. 
Uh, but open letters are more practical and more feasible uh, to strike when the metal is hot. So write an open letter in a, in a timely time. Uh, so it's like the, the social distancing open letter may, may, not, may not have been as effective at this time a year ago, but it's much more effective now. Or maybe there's something happening on Cal U's campus that you want to roll. There's not much happening on Cal U's campus now, if anything at all. But if there's something that happened on Cal U's campus, uh, it's, it might be a good idea to write about it in the next day or two and get it in the most recent uh, campus newspaper so people can read that. If you write it the following semester, it may not be as impactful. So you can write them anytime, but it's always good to strike when the metal is hot. And now I will give you guys, uh, we will go over the assignment sheet for the open letter. And I will submit this and post it on the D2L for your convenience. But here it is. So, and I can make this a little bigger. Your eyes are probably better than mine, your young eyes. All right, so this is the evaluative sequence. And I think this thing is recording. Yeah, I hope it is. So as a Cal U student, you have encountered many situations on or near campus that have become a source of frustration. You might often seek an avenue to vent your frustrations, whether it be on social media, during dinner with your friends, or on the phone with your parents. Well, you're probably home now. Uh, but ultimately, these grievances are dismissed, or people are like, well, I hear you, but that's just the end of it. However, instead of idly standing by, you decide to pen an open letter or a letter to the editor to articulate your concerns. So I think it's always important to have your audience in mind. Uh, and for this assignment, it's for the university or local community or whoever's reading a particular newspaper that you might be doing it. Or perhaps you might be just writing a very sophisticated Facebook post. Uh, but just make sure you know who your audience is. Uh, with that being said, you're not going to want to write it for a highly specialized audience. You're going to want to write it for the general pop populace, general public. Uh, so the task is that I want you guys to reflect on what grinds your gears. Uh, if you think about the old, fa uh, not Facebook, but Family Guy episode where Peter has this little news clip where he talks about what grinds his gears. Think about what grinds your gears and write about it. And then try to find a venue for potential publication. It could be the Cal Times or it could be a local newspaper. Uh, the letter should include the following, an intended recipient. So it could be dear people, uh, dear public, dear society, or it might be to who this may concern. Uh, a clear introduction establishing a point of contention at Cal U or society and how it impedes your learning, uh, comfort, or well-being. I think that with the aspects of social distancing, it's important that people do this because it protects all of our well-being. But again, you can write about whatever you like. You could always make a complaint about Cal U if you want. Like, I'm very frustrated about this. Uh, maybe because it's time to register they could have more efficient ways, but it doesn't have to be about Cal, you could be about anything. And the body paragraphs that clearly identify a problem and the subsequent consequences. Here is the problem, and because of the problem, here are the consequences we are dealing with. Uh, body paragraphs that offer a remedy to the problem and shows how the problem can improve. So you're saying, I have identified a problem, but here's how we can fix the problem. And a conclusion that is humble, yet ironic. So uh, in the letter from Birmingham jail, uh, Martin Luther King kind of ends it like ironically. He's, he pretty much is like, well, what do I know? Uh, who am I? I'm just some person in jail. What do I know? But he's being ironic. Uh, and when you conclude your own letter, you could do the same thing. You could say like, well, I'm, I'm weighing in on this issue, whatever it might be. But like, what do I know? I'm just a college student. What do I know? So you could do something like that. And then for length, the letter should only be 300, 400 words tops. Uh, if you're submitting this, ideally, I'm not asking you to, if you were to submit this to a newspaper or a Facebook post or anything like that, you'd have to know that some people aren't going to read something that's too long. So 300 words is really what you should shoot for. But if it's a little longer, that's fine. Uh, I, don't, I don't need you to write like, uh, like 10 theses of why people should stay in the house in 400 pages. Uh, I'm not looking for that. You need to keep it short, sweet, and to the point, offer a solution, and then, and then go about doing it. And uh, here is the evaluation for it. Is the task completed? Is the article concise and grammatical? So is the letter concise and grammatical? So are you proofreading it? Are you taking it to the virtual writing center? Or are you conferencing with me on Zoom to go through that? 
uh, is the topic compelling? It's like, oh, well, I'm gonna write an open letter to people who, are, who leave the sink on. Like, that's not that interesting. So make sure it's a, a very interesting letter. It's like, oh, to the people who uh, leave the lights on when they leave the room. Eh, it might work, but it's not that exciting. I've got an email here. Uh, okay, so uh, does the writer highlight a problem? In your letter, do you say, okay, this is the problem? Uh, does the writer offer a solution to the problem? Uh, does the writer include a clear introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion? Uh, so that all kind of ties into everything else. And then the, do you have topic sentences? Uh, and then is the draft proofread? So again, like it, it, that would tie in with the uh, concise and grammatical. Uh, I would make a note that this is not a research-based essay, um, but you must provide a list of links and references for any information statistics you implement into your letter. So uh, give credit where you get it. So if you write the letter, just have a separate sheet saying that this is, uh, this is where I got the information. And then the mentor text, and I'll put it on D2L, is Martin Luther King's uh, letter from Birmingham jail. It's a little lengthy, but you can pull out some very strong rhetorical moves on how Martin Luther King kind of calls out the uh, Birmingham, Alabama clergy. Uh, and then here are the due dates. The rough draft is due 412 on the D2L form. So as we did in class, I don't need you to have it written its entirety, but I need you guys to have some ideas, uh, a rough draft, some handwritten notes, just a, key, a couple of key topic, talking points that you want to develop. On the 19th, uh, you need to have the evaluative draft in its entirety on D2L by midnight, by 11.59 p.m. And then on, uh, I will grade those as soon as I can within a day or two. They're only a page, so it shouldn't take me very long. And then on the 26th, I need the evaluative revision on the D2L drop box by 11.59 p.m. Uh, so that's that. And if you have any questions about this at all, be sure to email me, and I'd be more than happy to help you. And I will submit, I will put this uh, assignment sheet on D2L for your convenience. But I think it's also important that I give some, uh, some guidance and uh, feedback on how to compose this letter. And I will put an example on D2L for you as well. So we've kind of talked about why we should do it, when you should do it, but I will give you some uh, quick and dirty tips. And I will put this on D2L as well. So the first thing you want to do is grab the reader's intention. Like make, give them a reason to want to read this letter. If I read the newspaper and it's a boring letter, I just don't read it. I just go to the sports section. Give your readers a reason not to go to the sports section. Uh, so grab their attention. You're, so like you have to come in hot. Like a lot of young timers like to say, go zero to a hundred. Well, we need to go zero to a thousand as fast as you possibly can in this letter. So your opening sentence is very important. It should tell uh, readers what you're writing about and make them want to read more. So after they read this, it's like, ooh, this is exciting. I want to read more of it. Explain what the letter is about at the start. So you want to be quick, you want to be concise, and then you want to end it. Don't make the editor or general public wait to find out what you want to say. Tell them your key point at the beginning. Get to it. Don't like play hard to get or sidestep the issue. Say very clearly what the problem is. You're coming to come in and say this. I write this letter because I have seen too many people outside during the coronavirus pandemic. They need to keep their asses inside. You may not want to say that in your letter, but you can, you can work in the spirit of that. And tell them at the beginning. Explain why the issue is important. If you were motivated enough to write a letter to a newspaper or a magazine or make this an eloquent Facebook post, the importance of your topic may seem clear to you. Remember, though, that the general public probably doesn't share your background or the same level of interest. Explain the issue and its importance simply. Uh, like coronavirus, people can die. Pr pretty cut and dry. Use plain language that most people will, under will understand. So you don't have to use these eloquent sentences and these big words. Short, sweet, to the point, get down to the nitty gritty. Give evidence for any praise or criticism. Uh, if you were writing a letter discussing a past or pending action, be clear in showing why this will have a good or bad result. So if you're, if you're complaining about like the stimulus checks, say that this is a good idea or this is a bad idea. I personally think it's a good idea. 
or you can write a letter about why college students can get stimulus checks. That's just an idea. If you watch this video, you'll know it. Otherwise, you won't. Uh, state your opinion about what should be done. So this is you giving your solution to the problem. You can just write a letter to vent, but you could do that on Twitter or Facebook. This is a more sophisticated posture. Uh, but you could also do it to support or criticize a certain action or policy. But you may also have suggestions about what can be done to improve the situation. If, if, if this is the case, be sure to add these solutions and be specific. Just don't say, well, college students should get stimulus checks too. Well, say why college students should get stimulus checks. Like, economy's rough. You need money. You got you to pay for food if you're still living in your apartment. You're not, you may not have the same job. So it's really important. Uh, and the more good reasons you can to back up your suggestions, the better. Uh, if you just say, like, well, I want money, and, and then people ask you why, you can't give them answers, well, then they're not, probably not going to give you the money. But if you can come with more uh, suggestions and more feedback uh, and more reasons, then it, like people are more inclined to take it seriously. But most important, keep it brief. Generally, like if you were going to submit this to the Cal Times or the Observer Reporter, Tribune Review, Post Gazette, whatever newspaper, shorter letters have a better chance of being published. Uh, with local newspapers or campus newspapers, they might only be getting two or three submissions for letters to the editor, open letters. Uh, but bigger newspapers might have a thousand a day, like some of the New York, especially now, people might be very frustrated about the coronavirus. So people are writing about it and sending it into the newspaper. But here it might be a little different. Uh, so if you think about the Cal Times or anything else, uh, keep it short so they'll take it and they'll accept it. So go back over your letter and see if anything can be cut or condensed. If you have a lot to say and it can't be easily made short, you may want to check with the editor before you send it. Uh, maybe you can get like this op-ed or a, like a lengthy cover page or, or something like that. Uh, and then last but not least, sign the letter. Uh, you'd have to do that obviously virtually. So you'd just be like sign respectfully, Rod Taylor uh, in your title. So you can be like, I'm just a student at Cal U and includes your address, phone number, and email address. I would say, hey, don't give your address. People might show up because they're angry about the letter, but you might wanna give them some form of contact information. But also know that wherever you send the letter, uh, they may not want that kind of information to protect your safety, and they may forward uh, any uh, correspondence to you uh, through the newspaper for your own safety. So those are the, the guidelines. If you have any questions about that, just you can email me and uh, let me get, go back to the, uh, let me see here. If you have any questions, you can just email me and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, this video will be on YouTube for your convenience and we can go from there. Uh, but I'm going to share my screen one more time because there's, I want you guys to do uh, one thing on D2L. And if I get on D2L, excuse me, you'll know what I mean. Uh, this isn't helpful. There we go. So first things, when you get on D2L, uh, I can show you where everything is. It always runs slower when I screen share. So you get into D2L and you get on the content. The first thing you need to do, excuse my parents, they don't understand. Um, you can click on lecture videos and this video will be there, but also the letter in regards to a letter from Birmingham jail. So the video about that. It gives it a good summary and it provides great context as to why Martin Luther King Jr. did this. And the YouTube link is embedded into D2L. Uh, you, all you have to do is just click on it and it will play. It, again, it provides excellent context. This video too will be there, but I will also email you guys this. And this way, the YouTube video, you can watch it on your phone. Um, if, hopefully you're not out about, but you can watch it on your phone, iPad, laptop, whatever. Uh, TV if you really want to. Never been on TV. And then the next thing is uh, on communication, just where we have our weekly discussion forum, you click on discussions. Okay. 
and I have form post six. And what I want you guys to do is focus on what grinds your gears. And I have a nice little Peter Griffin uh, news clip from Family Guy that talks about what grinds his gears. Uh, and if you want to, I'm not going to make you watch it. It has a little inappropriate stuff, but you can watch the, the clip of Family Guy where he talks about what grinds his gears. Uh, but here it is. Here's the forum post. It functions as 10 points like it always would. Is Normally we have this conversation in class, but since we moved to an online format, we will do it here. We, we all have something that grinds our gears. It could, be a little, uh, it could be little pet peeves, such as someone chewing with their mouth open, or it could be something more serious, such as people not using turn signals. Whatever the case may be, we all have something that grinds our gears. I, I do. I hate when people don't use turn signals. Uh, but I also have other ones, like when I'm teaching and people in the other room are talking, stuff like that. Uh, then for this week's post, I would like you to reflect in 100 to 150 words, what grinds your gears? Uh, maybe being at home all the time might be something you're learning things about your siblings and family that you didn't know and you didn't want to know, whatever. Uh, it can be anything that pertains to your time at Cal U, uh, maybe registering for classes is a pain, uh, maybe the food, whatever, a pet peeve, uh, or anything related to the quarantine, maybe people staying in the house. Uh, the choice is yours. After you compose your post, however, you must read at least five of your peers and respond to at least two. Uh, I think these will be fairly interesting, so you might want to read them all. I look forward to reading them. Uh, and in your response, rather than simply say, oh, well, I agree, you know, people chewing with their mouths is a problem, you can also provide a solution to the problem. Uh, this is like, I think that maybe if you have a problem with this, maybe go walk outside. Or make your family go missing. Don't do that, though. Do not. I just wish the family would be a little more quiet. Um, and, and that's essentially it. I will upload all the documents I discussed in this video. And if you have any questions, be sure to email me. Thanks.